Welcome to Game Founder Reviews. In this video, we're going to take a look at Game Election. Game Election is a tool designed to democratize the game selection process. Let's jump right in with the description of the rules, see an example vote, and I'll be back for some closing remarks. The stage is set for a group of four very indecisive gamers to pick which game they're about to play. To do that, you just uh, lay out the games. You can nominate up to eight within the framework of Game Election, and you just give everybody the same set of cards. Um, technically, they should have numbers one to one more than the number of games. So here we have six games, so it goes from one to seven, but you can certainly give them any group of cards or just all the cards and figure it out from there. So players use their identical decks of cards to vote on each game secretly. So a person might vote here, 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 and here, and then they're going to have one left over, and some of the cards have abilities on them that you can use a little later in the round. But point being, after everybody's made their secret vote, there's a brief pause for backroom deals, and the one card left in your hand might have a special ability. Generally speaking, the more powerful cards like the Yeah Yeahs and the Vetoes have special abilities. These are on a first-come, first-served basis, so either play it now or forever hold your peace. You can play this on a game, for instance, and this game will lose ties. But then you have to set up the winning game, even if it's a different one, so it kind of levels out there. There's also cancel a player's vote. You just discard somebody's vote without looking at it face down. But then the penalty there is that player gets to decide your place in turn order for the next game. The other one is this game wins ties. And uh, obviously, if you play that on a game and it's tied for first place, it's going to win. But you have to clean up the winning game, even if it's not that one. And lastly, swap two cards another player played. You can't look at them, but you get to switch their votes around. And the penalty there is that player gets to decide what faction or color you are in the next game. So ultimately, we're going to tally the votes, and uh, they're just going to have a different number on each thing. Nays are worth zero. Yeahs are worth one. Yeah, yeahs are worth two. And vetoes are negative times the number of vetoes. So if there's two vetoes on a place, for instance, this one is worth minus two, and this one is worth minus two, so that would actually be minus four. Then the game with the most votes is the one that gets played, in accordance with any special powers used. This will serve as my substitute for the playthrough, because it's essentially just a vote. All the players have made their votes, and this is what a vote might look like. Now all the players have one card left in their hand, which they could use the abilities of if it has any. The purple guy happens to have one, and this is just throw it down as you will type of thing. He decides he wants to play this cancel player's vote on this orange card, because he really wants to play El Grande, it's his favorite game, and he knows the orange guy doesn't like it that much. But uh, unfortunately, the orange guy is going to get to pick his turn order in the game. So this gets thrown out, and uh, we don't know what it is at this time, but then we just reveal the votes, and whichever thing has the most votes wins. So let's look at uh, Robo Rally, for example. It has a yes, a no, and two vetoes. And because there's two vetoes, each veto is worth negative two. So that's negative four plus one, negative three. Probably not playing Robo Rally. Um, through the Ages is a little more popular. It's got a yeah, 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 and yes. Yeah, so that's one, two, three, four, five. The nay is no. So that's the front runner right now. Um, there's a yeah, yeah, nay, yeah. So this is three. So not quite up to Through the Ages standards. And over here we have a yeah, a veto, a yeah, and a yeah. So that's three minus one is two. And over here, Tichu has three yes and two no's, but the just three yes. And lastly, over here, we have one, two, three, four. So the big winner is going to be Through the Ages, and that's the game that gets played. As a gamer, I really appreciate the idea of turning the game selection process into a game itself. I mean, you're there to play games, not to sit around and select them all day. I'm in one group that's notoriously indecisive, so I took this there, got a few confused looks and a couple of laughs, and that pretty much made it worth it. I mean, it does what it sets out to do, and that is to speed up and democratize the game selection process. But in general, I think most groups can decide pretty quickly, so it's more of a funny thing. But it would make a great stocking stuff or a gag gift for somebody who's got a lot of games. It's just like a neat gaming accessory. Though I do recommend that you use some of the higher numbers that are more powerful, um, just because in my experience that mitigates the chance of ties. I haven't had too many ties, but it can happen with a lot of the lower numbers because they're just kind of one point either way. So if it looked interesting to you or you just think this might be a funny gift to somebody, it's a really clever idea. That's game selection.